Hello, my name is Ron Kim. In this module, the first in the series phonology, we will present the consonants of classical Armenian. Here's the roadmap for today's module. First, we will present the consonant inventory of classical Armenian, then proceed to a discussion of the stops and affricates, and finally, consonant alternations. Classical Armenian had 30 consonants, including nine stops, arranged in a series of three labial stops, p, b, p, three dental stops, t, d, t, and three velar stops, k, g, k. There were six affricates, the sounds t, z, t, transcribed respectively c, j, and c, with the little mark of aspiration, ch, j, ch, transcribed the same way, except with the little hot check on top. There were also six fricatives, ch and h, transcribed respectively, x and h, and s, z, sh, and z, the latter two transcribed with a hot check over the s and z. There were six sonorants, the nasals m and n, two sounds transcribed with different kinds of r, a r without a dot, a dot on top, which was presumably a kind of tap similar to the American English intervocalic T or D of water, for example, and a trilled R represented by R with a dot on top. There were also two kinds of L, a quote unquote normal L and a probably velarized L transcribed as L with a slash through it. Finally, two or three glides, W, V, and Y. The last is transcribed Y as in English. Uh, the exact value of W and V continues to be debated. Here is a table showing all 30 consonant phonemes of classical Armenian. As you see, the 15 stops in affricates are arranged as respectively voiceless, voiced, and aspirate, although this actual situation was probably somewhat more complex. That's right up here. A long-standing problem of classical Armenian phonology is the realization of the stops and affricates. Traditionally, they are transcribed as voiceless, voiced, and voiceless aspirated. For example, t, d, and t. In diachronic terms, they reflect a shift in manner of articulation similar to, but independent of, Grimm's Law in Germanic, uh, whereby, for example, Proto-Indo-European t became Armenian t, Proto-Indo-European d became Armenian t, and finally Proto-Indo-European d became Armenian d. One major difficulty for this view is the realization of the stops and affricates in modern Armenian dialects. Most Western Armenian dialects have voiced stops corresponding to classical Armenian and modern Eastern Armenian voiceless stops. Conversely, they show voiceless aspirated stops in many cases for classical Armenian and Middle Eastern Armenian voiced stops. This has many consequences. For example, the Christian name Peter or Petros is pronounced in Western Armenian Bedros, right there. Uh, the seat of the Armenian Apostolic Church, Ejmiadzin in Eastern Armenian is Ejmiadzin in Western Armenian, which is why it is often transcribed as such in the Latin alphabet. And to give another example, Berem, I carry or I bring, is in Western Armenian, Perem or Perem. The following map shows the distribution of these different realizations in the pre-1915 Armenian dialects. You see that in this map, adopted from the pioneering work of Hracha Adjarian before the 1915 massacres, uh, we have several different groups of dialects. Note that, for example, in the dialect of group five over here, right, we have this realization of the three series of consonants. Whereas over in the east, in the Caucasus, we have the more familiar classical looking system over here. Right. Since there is no support from anywhere in the world's languages for a so-called flip-flop rule, whereby A becomes B, but B becomes A, there's only one possible conclusion. 
that either the voiceless series or the voiced series or both must have had some additional feature. For example, the voiceless stops might have been ejectives, the, the, as in some modern Eastern Armenian dialects, or the voiced stops were actually something else, probably voiced aspirated. This continues to be debated. But one interesting proposal by Andrew Garrett interprets Ajarian's law as an effect of breathy voice. What is Ajarian's law? It is a rule by which back vowels in initial syllables are fronted after voiced stops in certain mostly Eastern Armenian dialects. You can see some examples right here. In the dialect of Karabakh, for example, classical Armenian ban corresponds to Karabakh pen. And to look at one more example, the word for water, classical Armenian jur, corresponds to Karabakh chur, with fronting of u to e. Garrett argues on general phonetic grounds that this could have been caused by breathy voice. In other words, that the voiced stops were actually breathy voiced, often called voiced aspirated b, d, g, j, and z. In that case, Armenian would have retained the Proto-Indo-European phonetic value of these stops as such, and the parallel with Germanic would not be so precise. Let's now look at consonant alternations in classical Armenian. One of the most important is the alternation between the two different kinds of R sounds, R and R dot. They are separate phonemes, although minimal pairs are rare. For example, lur, knowledge, versus lur, silent. One rule, which has almost no exceptions, is that R becomes R before N. So we see that, for example, in a verb such as aorist darzai, I turned, turned around, intransitive, but present darnam, where the R becomes a R before N. Similarly, we have ire, man, nominative plural arc, men, but genitive singular arn, with R to R dot before N. Finally, Lyarn, mountain, with the road R, but genitive Lerin, with a tap R, but then that again becomes Lerne, by, as we will see, loss of that vowel in an unstressed syllable. So this produces many alternations between the two kinds of R's, but the alternation is often leveled. For example, in the word for lamb, the rolled or trilled R has been generalized. We have Garn and genitive Garin, not Garin. Conversely, in a word such as spring, Garun, the genitive is Garnan, not what we would expect, Garnan. So we have a fairly complex situation in which certain words alternate between the two R's. Others have generalized either R dot or R without a dot. Another important consonant alternation involves the two kinds of L's. These two are separate phonemes, though minimal pairs are rare. Compare gol, the infinitive of be or exist, and gol, thief. The distribution of these two sounds is partly complementary. Word initially, we have only L in native names. Uh, in foreign names, you do find the velarized la, for example, in lazar, that's lazar. And we have variation in some words. For example, the word for wolf is usually spelled gail, but also occurs in manuscripts as guile. These facts suggest that le and le developed by some kind of phonemic split from pre-Armenian L, but the exact conditions are still not yet clarified. Another fully productive alternation is that between H and zero. Initial H is deleted when it stands word internally, for example, in a compound or after a preposition. So if we look at the root hot, for example, in the verb hatanem, we have here in the compound lezuat, literally tongue cut with split tongue, we see loss of the H. We also see uh, after the preverb z that hatanem alternates with zatanem, where the H is lost after the z. One more example, the noun het right, forms the adverb yet from ye het after, right, after a trace, after a step. Finally, we have an alternation between y and zero. 
word final y is deleted after i and u in the present third singular and the present second plural. These examples are present third singular. After e, the sequence a is realized as oops, is realized as a uh, high mid a. And so you see the alternations here between, for example, kai, he or she stands, goi, there is, there are, but we have here sire, he or she loves, from a, and we have loss of the y in nisti, he or she sits down, and hewu, he or she pours. This is also apparent in the imperfect, where the y before the endings of a and o conjugation verbs disappears after the other stems, ending in e or u. So we have kai, I was standing, we have goyin, uh, there were, there existed, but sirei, I loved, nistei, I sat down or was sitting down, and hui, I was pouring. Finally, there are a few consonant alternations which are restricted to particular morphemes, and so they are important to keep in mind when studying the morphology of classical Armenian. For example, in the aorist, there's an alternation between ts, aspirated ts, and s. The rule is fairly complex. If the aorist stem is weak, it ends in the sound ts, and consists of more than one syllable, the sequence ts ts is dissimilated to ts in all forms of the aorist subjunctive outside the first singular. In the first example here, we will see that there is no such dissimilation. We have batsi, I opened, aorist subjunctive, which as we will see also can serve as future, batits, I will open, but third singular, batse, with a sequence of two t sounds, he or she will open. In these other forms, however, you see that there is this dissimilation Siretits, I will love, but third singular, siretse, he or she will love. Similarly, dardutits, I will turn, but dardutse, right there, he or she uh, will turn. Finally, here's a nice uh, irregularity. Uh, the first singular of the verb make is araritz, I will make, but the third singular has adopted the same pattern. It's an R, so it shouldn't change but it has adopted this pattern. So arastse, he or she will make. We have a, an alternation of B, W, and zero, but only in, in the instrumental singular and instrumental plural. By the way, the instrumental plural is formed by adding the sound k. That's why you have here k in parentheses. The rules look like this. So we have, for example, harb with father, anzamb, with the person. After vowels except u, we have w. So azgao with the people, zio with the horse. Note that that is written with a v because o w stands for the vowel u. And bayu with the word. Finally, after u, there is only a zero, right? The w disappears. So we have kowu with the cow. And once again, this alternation occurs only in these case forms. Finally, we have an alternation between Y and W in the, in the inflection of two important classes of nouns. If we look at the paradigm of ordi, son, we see that this I, well, before a vowel, should give us Y. Instead, we find the Y becoming a W in all of the places where it is highlighted before the vowel O. For example, genitive, dative, ordwoi, right? Genitive, plural, ordwots. In the paradigm of the noun teli, place, we similarly have telwoi, but you'll notice in the plural, where the ending is ats, there is no such dissimilation. We do have the y, and that produces the diphthong ea in teliats. So this alternation is very important in nominal inflection in two large classes of nouns. That concludes this module on the consonant phonology of classical Armenian. Stay tuned for the next module in which we will discuss the vowel system.